Okay, folks. Um, looking for a update here on the land yacht. Um, some of you may recall there oh, about a year ago I had some battery boxes made uh, for the boot area. But when I actually got the batteries, uh, I kind of decided I was going to change the plan a bit and instead of having two separate battery boxes in the back, uh, I was going to go for just one. So that's what you see in front of you here. Uh, it's a pretty simple affair. It's a 2 millimeter aluminium uh, box, nothing uh, very special about it. Uh, it's going to be holding 32 cells. Well, there's a few things we're going to be doing uh, to this box that I thought we'd run through here ju just before doing so. Uh, you may notice inside that we have these uh, kind of standoffs here, channel pieces uh, w welded in to the base. Now, they serve two purposes. Uh, the first purpose is to put a bit of strength into the base of the box. And the second purpose is to give me a little void um, underneath the cells for my battery heating system. So uh, the first step in this uh, is we're going to insulate uh, the bottom and the four sides of the box with a particular kind of insulation uh, that I laid my hands on. Um, this is called, I believe, magnesium silicate uh, roll. It's a, it's, it seems to be based on a kind of a wool. Um, and it comes in various thicknesses. Uh, the thickness that we have here, as I decided to use, is six millimeters. And it's extremely uh, high insulation value. And it comes in a roll just like so. Um, rather fortunately, uh, one of the standard roll widths is just absolutely perfect uh, to fit inside our box. So that's going to take care of two sides and the bottom for me, uh, just in one single piece. Now, the other important property that this insulation has uh, is that it is uh, flame retardant and uh, can tolerate temperatures in excess of 1200 degrees centigrade. So I'm thinking if I have temperatures in excess of 1200 centigrade in here, uh, the insulation is going to be the least of my concerns. So obviously the point of this um, is so that we can have battery heating. Now, Battery heating uh, is a, it seems to be something that people miss out on uh, when they're building cars and building battery boxes. And I think it's a very important aspect. Uh, certainly my experience with the battery heaters that I fitted to the E36, uh, being that the car basically performs the same all year round. Uh, so I think it's a very important aspect. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fit the insulation into the box. We'll be just using some high temperature spray glue just to uh, coat the inside of the box to keep the insulation in place. So I'll come back when I have that done and uh, we'll run through uh, fitting the heating system and we'll uh, do a little bit of an explanation on that. Back soon. Alright folks. Uh, what I'm hoping we'll be able to see here, and I hope it'll actually illustrate what I'm trying to do. I've gone ahead and I've insulated uh, the inside of the enclosure uh, with the 6mm um, super duper insulation. Uh, I'll dig out a specification on that and uh, put a link to it in the description of this video. Um, as I said, uh, the two things that really drew me to it uh, were its high temperature tolerance and high insulation value. So what we have uh, here is one complete row of cells, the ones nearest the camera. Now I've just got a few uh, spread out on the, the 
the other two rows and we can hopefully see uh, on the bottom uh, you'll see a kind of a black cable uh, running along in the valley uh, that we created with the pieces of aluminium channel um, in the uh, center between the cells. Now what's in there is <coughs> something uh, made by a company called Trace Heating. Um, it is, let me see if I can get some data on this out of this uh, um, little handbook here. <coughs> it is a frost protection cable, uh, power supply 230 volts AC, and the rated power at plus 10 degrees centigrade is 12 watts per meter. And uh, I purchased a 12, 6 meter um, piece that I've just laid out uh, reasonably evenly uh, in the valleys uh, underneath the cells. Um, so what do we need to know about that guy? Well it's IP67 rated and uh, can be used down to minus 45 degrees and there's just some um, there's just some uh, data on it. Now <clears throat> the thing that we need to know about this particular cable and I had to go through a little bit of a process to actually find something that I think should work is that this is what's called a self-regulating heating tape. Now what that means is that as the temperature increases, the power output, uh, the heating power output from that cable will decrease. So it's not like it's just going to constantly pump out 12 watts per meter continuously. Now there's a graph here, I'll try and get it in front of the camera and know how this is going to come out. But um, <clears throat> what, we've, what we've got here is that we start off at uh, the top of that graph there at zero degrees centigrade. We're running probably a little over 16, maybe 17 watts uh, per meter, falling away to 2 watts per meter at plus 45C. And there's a fairly linear uh, curve then, as you can see there. Um, from the two extremes. So what I hope um, will actually occur here uh, is that we can energize that heating cable whenever the car is on charge and it will help to if we have, if we have a very cold day, very cold night, which we seem to be getting more of them uh, winters in this country seem to be getting longer, colder and wetter. So uh, I think this is an important aspect. And one of the main, I suppose, pushes recently uh, that I got to make me consider battery heating more seriously. Uh, I was talking to some people that run uh, Nissan Leaf and um, Basically, the range uh, of the car basically plummets uh, when the temperature gets cold. So what I'm hoping is for about a hundred bucks worth of stuff here, uh, we can um, not have that particular problem. So what I'm going to do um, here is I'm going to install all the cells in here. Uh, I'm going to strap them up. Uh, we're just going to do a few tests with the uh, automatic gearbox sit system here. Pull some energy out of the cells. And we will see, uh, we will plug in the heating tape. And basically have a thermocouple in there. Uh, leave it on all day. And uh, it's you know, fairly cold ambient temperature uh, in the workshop today. is so I'd say probably only 3 or 4 de degrees if that. Uh, centigrade that is um, so uh, yeah that's kind of the plan uh, with the new battery box and we will see then 
um, how the thing plays out. So I think that self-regulating heating cable uh, might just work quite well. If it doesn't, well, we can put a thermostat or a switch of some form on it. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's where we're at at the minute. Um, we've got to get this battery box into the car and make sure everything runs. I've got an accessory box there that I've got to uh, be going on the side of this box. Uh, that has fuse, contact, or all that kind of stuff. We'll run through that better when the box is going into the car. So that's it, really. Just a short update today uh, to see how we're faring out and uh, we'll see how this battery heating system functions and uh, let everyone know. Thanks for watching. That's not a car battery. Now that's a car battery. Well, as you can see folks, we had a little bit of a change of plan here from what I had originally uh, intended to do. Um, we have the main battery box uh, installed in the boot of the yacht uh, comprising 32 of the CA180 cells uh, for nominally about 104 volts. Um, and uh, basically I uh, just kind of decided to skip any kind of um, messing about with the box outside the car because, well, a couple of reasons, uh, not least of which is I need to get this car on the road ASAP. Um, and apart from that, uh, the cells were kind of in my way here in the workshop. Um, so what I did today uh, was basically and see here hopefully it's a piece of uh, 50 by 50 by 5 heavy uh, steel angle uh, which we welded into the two frame rails of the car uh, to carry the back uh, side of the battery box because the boot basically the boot floor is quite level uh, for about a foot inside uh, where it's closest to the uh, just to the area in there just to, behind the back seats but then it tends to go all kinds of strange shapes and start falling off towards the back of the car uh, so we needed to fit this angle here uh, basically to give us a flat surface uh, on which to uh, secure the battery box and that box is now installed um, to say the full 32 cells are now in there they're strapped up um, connected and measured uh, to be correct voltage so on the rear of the box then over on the right hand side uh, we have a polycarbonate enclosure bolted on uh, which currently contains our 600 amp for as Shawmut uh, DC fuse and a Kilovac um, EV200 contactor. There will be a few other odds and sods going into that box, um, but the fuse is self explanatory and the purpose of the rear contactor be when the key gets turned off. Um, basically, uh, the traction circuit will be broken here and also broken in the motor controller uh, so it just gives us a double brake uh, situation on our traction circuit and also we'll have inertia switches uh, front and rear so if we have a shunt um, all contactors pop open and uh, disconnect the um, traction uh, voltage from the the, the uh, drive system. So that's kind of what we're at. Uh, I didn't do much filming on this because it was just kind of lots of boring uh, shots of me bending in and out of the boot area there, just welding, bolting, and putting cells in and so forth. Uh, we've, we've got our two. If you can see down the bottom of the shot there. 
We have our two um, our two undercar cables currently going into the let's call it the junction box here. Uh, so that goes through the steel reinforced conduit that runs underneath the car, and it brings these two cables up to the front for me, where they'll be connected into the front battery box. Uh, we still got a bit of a rat's nest of wiring just kind of hanging in the spare wheel well there. Um, the next part of the plan will be to install a box uh, down here. I'm going to pick up a nice large box, um, pop it in here and land in all of these cables and install all of the AC stuff related to charging like circuit breakers, fuses, all that sort of thing. Just pull back a little bit there. You can probably just, just about see some of that... Uh, cable hanging around there. Regards boot space then, once the, once the car is finished off and we're happy with all that we'll basically uh, get this, uh, we get, I'm not much good with kind of uh, cutting out shapes and all of that sort of thing so we'll get, uh, we get somebody to you know make a kind of a little pull out uh, panel that will go in there and just kind of close off all of that stuff and we still have this large area here available for luggage storage uh, shopping bags whatever else so quite happy with that uh, regarding the cell count um, let's say we got 32 in that box there and we have 10 up front uh, for 42 cells about a we're going to start another 125 volts uh, we have another eight cells here uh, that need that need to go in, and I think what I'm going to do with those is I'm, I'm going to make two four cell packs, and we'll install those um, under the back seats, um, basically where the petrol tank was. Uh, so we'll make use of that space there, and uh, it puts a bit of weight in front of the back axle also. Uh, so, that, so that is, I guess, about it. A uh, lot of work, but now that that's in there, it's all starting to uh, come to fruition. Now, we'll be going through as well. The box is currently bolted into this rail here, but there'll be a, there'll be other tie downs going in, and, and a cover and a heavy duty uh, strap, which will be holding the box in so that in the event that we have a roll a roll over um, the cells really can't uh, come to any harm. Um, another advantage of this strategy here is that we still have the crumple zone uh, area here in the, the back half of the boot structure as uh, so of we if we get a shunt this will help to absorb any uh, nasties and hopefully keep the cells safe so I can put them out and put them into another car. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, stay with us folks. We got uh, probably maybe another weekend uh, before we start doing some driving tests and uh, start shaking the problems out. Got a lot of other things to do but uh, we're going to be on the road fairly soon so stay with us and thanks for watching.